All right, guys, here's another update of the Youngbird kit. I'm gonna fly them on this nice, cool morning. The birds are on two tablespoons of feed per bird, 15.5% winner's cup with no corn. And it's working really good for the young birds. Some of them are starting to go into the molt. The older ones, at least. Like, this is one of the youngest. So it still has nice, it's nice young feathers. This one does too, but this one here is starting to look kind of rough. This red here is starting to molt out, which is normal. The birds are going into molt season, so. I don't know if you guys ever look at the droppings of your pigeons, but you guys kind of want to keep an eye on them. The droppings on your pigeons keeps you updated on their health. Uh, when your birds are uh, droppings are like soft or watery, then the birds are stressed out. Lime green color is also a sign of stress. What you guys want to get is the dark green with the mixture of a little bit of white. I'm not sure exactly what it means, but I know from the older guys, it means your, bird, your birds are healthy and they're not stressing out, nor are they sick. So that's how you can keep a lookout. Like this bird here, it looks like it's just probably cold or it's too early, but it looks down. So if its droppings were watery, then I'd be concerned, but the bird is just as active as anybody else. And its droppings are as round and as normal as any of the other birds. So that's another tip for you guys. I'm not sure if you guys ever looked into that, but there it is. Also, you guys wanna clean your perch. Every time you let your birds out, clean the perch and you know it doesn't pile up on you guys keeps them healthy all right so i'm gonna let them out now birds are kidding really nice some of them are starting to come into the roll like that red there just committed nice to one the birds are kidding really solid and this is what the family of birds would do for you It'll give you good kidders, early development. Nice quality. I've been breeding these birds for about six, seven years now. The family, or at least the same family. So I, I get a lot of the same traits now that I know what to look for, select, and I've learned how to breed the birds from experience and then some of the closer guys to me like Steve Smith he's helped me a lot with the understanding of the family then I'm sure you guys heard of California spinners Damien oh that's a falcon oh it is a falcon attack there it is guys First falcon attack. Let's see how the birds react to it. Young team, they've never been attacked before. They've been spooked before, but never been attacked. 
All right, guys, so while the birds are flying, I cleaned out the perches. That way tomorrow when I open the cage, I get a good view at what's what and who's in what box. And I get to see their droppings. And uh, not that I look for it every day and see, oh, let me see how the bird's doing. But I do look and then see, go from there. If I see signs of stress or or if it's because of the feed or if someone's sick, I'll, 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 I'll be able to see why and how and it gives me an idea. Once you're doing this long enough, you kind of have ideas of what your birds might and might not do. So the kit is right. I just seen them. They are. They're up kind of high right now. Oh, there they are. They're kind of high because of Falcon. They were running. They're so high up, the camera could barely see them. And they elevated. Right when they seen the falcon, they elevated. And uh, I think the falcon lost them. Because he circled a few times and uh, he left right after the first attack. So he might be waiting for them to come down. I'm not sure. So I'm going to keep an eye on them and then see what happens. Hopefully I don't lose one today if I already didn't. I, I didn't get to see the first attack very well. So I'm not sure if someone got hit or taken or what happened. But once they come down, I'll be able to see what's going on. All right guys, so here's the kid after being hit by the Falcon. They elevated real high. I couldn't see them anymore. And they stayed up there about 25 minutes. The Falcon didn't chase all the way up there. I think they went up so high so fast, the Falcon didn't want to chase them. I'm thinking that's what happened. That was a done bird that just gave it up right there. It's a nice spin. So now that I got hit the first time, I'm gonna try to keep the birds in. I'll probably start flying them every other day now. I've already been allowed by the Falcon to allow me to bring them into the, some of the spin, kidding good. Uh, they haven't been disrupted too much as far as Predator until today. So we'll go to every other day, try to keep these birds around now that I know the Falcon's back around here. Try not to lose the birds.
All right, guys, so the kid's still up and flying after being hit by the Falcon. And due to uh, work reasons and things like that, I gotta uh, go. So one of the reasons I trained the birds for the trap door is now I get to leave the trap door open and let the feed, let some, some feed with the clean tray in there. And when the birds land, they'll all trap into the cage and at least they'll uh, be inside until I get back. So that's the pros of having your trap door and your birds trained to it. So we'll get back to it later and see if all the birds made it back in safely and go from there.